Hey, what's up guys? John here. You will not believe what is happening to the Hawaii real estate market after the devastating fires that cost 99 people their lives. 2,170 acres burned to the ground. 2,200 structures burned. They're preventing the sale of these properties. The government's going to step in and take them over. At least that's what they're proposing. I'm going to show you the evidence. I'm going to show you the facts. I'm going to show you what's going on because I believe that if it can happen in Hawaii, it could easily happen all throughout America, all fire ridden land. Whenever we see natural disasters, we could see similar policies implemented, just like we've seen with court cases that have happened in you know the 1980s, early 2000s, something happens and then they reference back as to the outcome of that case and what you know the next step should be. If this happens, what they're proposing happens in Hawaii, it's gonna be an absolute game changer. And I have a feeling that this is going to be used as a blueprint for the rest of America in high risk areas. I'm gonna break it all down for you clearly in this video with facts. Please hit the like button, hit the like button. YouTube will share this content to educate more people about what's really going on. And today's video is sponsored by greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you wanna fix your credit, you wanna position yourself for the greatest wealth trends of all time, which we're in right now, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, charge off medical bills, collections, foreclosures, you have uh, repossessions, you have anything on your report that is holding you down, get a hold of us, greatcreditfast.com. Take a look at this. Why Hawaii's government doesn't want developers buying burned land. Hawaii governor is trying to curb developers from purchasing destroyed lands in Maui as the island reels from the deadliest wildfires in the U.S. in over 100 years. Right? The big picture concerns are growing that nearly new Newly built homes would attract wealthy buyers, exasperating a housing crisis that has already driven native Hawaiians and local born residents out of their land, right? Well, look at what's happening here. So Hawaii governor seeks a moratorium on property sales, right? Moratorium, Time Magazine. Hawaii moles ban on sale of burned houses to prevent developers from trying to steal land. Think about this. These are people's primary residence. People have worked their whole life to live there. They're there, they have this one house, it gets burned to the ground. They still have a mortgage to pay, they still have property taxes, they still have utilities, they still have expenses, they still need a place to live. And now they can no longer go out there and list their property for sale on the open market. They have to wait to try to get a deal from the government. This is what's going on. I mean, this is crazy. Why Governor Josh Green said he would consider a temporary ban on the sale of any properties damaged in the fire that leveled Lahania last week to ensure residents aren't permanently displaced. As the tragedy, tragedy's death toll rose to 99 on Monday, Green said he has reached out to the state attorney general to discuss a moratorium on property sales in a historic seaside town. Maui has been facing serious burn, serious housing crunch and on unaffordable prices before the deadliest fire in the U.S. in over 100 years. Green said he didn't want to see the remains of Lanai slapped up, snapped up by the developers. You will be pretty much poorly informed if you try to steal land from our people and then build here, he told reporters during an update on the fires. For my part, I will try to allow no one from outside the state to buy any land until we get through this crisis and decide what Lanai should look be in the future, right? So they're gonna decide what it should look like in the future. It's not up to the property owners. It's not up to the people that own these homes to decide what the future is gonna look like. The government's stepping in, they're gonna decide what the future looks like. And so when you start to see, you know, these types of trends, I mean, it's concerning. Like, for example, this uh, Twitter account, 2 million followers, um, and this is 130, 227,000 views. So it just went from 130,000 to 227,000 views just in Hawaiian governor, says the state looking to purchase land destroyed, right? So they're, they're looking to think about this. They're looking to put an eviction or essentially a moratorium on these properties. They can't sell them, not allowed to sell them. And then the only available buyer would be the state, right? The only available buyer would be the state. And imagine if you were a real estate investor, just put this out there for a second. You're a real estate investor. You want to go out there and invest in real estate. There's an incredible, incredible deal. It's a four unit. Maybe you're renting right now. I mean, but you're like, you know what? If I can just get one deal. And then you had the ability to say, no other investor, no one else in existence can be the buyer. And you are now a motivated seller. I mean, like the, that seller's motivated. I mean, you're gonna be able to, you know, essentially control that transaction. 
You know, you're going to have more power, more authority over the price. You're going to have more power and authority over the terms. Seller is going to be at your mercy. And that's exactly what uh, looks like is going to happen throughout Hawaii, throughout that devastation that occurred. Uh, it's very, very unfortunate. But I mean, this seems like what's going to ultimately happen here. His comments came from the searchers, accompanied by over 20 cadaver dogs, continued combing through the remains with 25% of the burned area checked so far. Utility Hawaiian Electric Industries reported that 80% of West Maui residents who lost power last week would have it restored by day's end, not counting homes and businesses destroyed by the flames. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is unbelievable how fast this is all happening. Think about it. 10 days ago, eight days ago, this disaster unfolded. And then within that period, within that period, they're already exercising this uh, potential ban, a moratorium, um, not allowing investors to go out there and sell property. I mean, for me, if I owned a property here and let's just say it was near the beach, had a nice ocean view, it was my family home, maybe, you know, in that area, maybe it's worth a couple million dollars, but you bought it 20 years ago for pennies on the dollar. And, uh, and the place burns to the ground, maybe I don't want to sell, but I can't afford to rebuild it. I, would be, I wouldn't be completely devastated if I were to get a couple million dollars because at least I'd be able to go somewhere and you know, exercise some other options. At least I'd have that, I'd have my health, I'd have a check, and I'd be able to try to figure out something. It's not the ideal situation, but I'd be able to try to figure something out. But when they're sitting there waiting for the check from the government to hopefully be able to sell their property, uh, not being able to sell. It's just bleeding them out financially. And that's what I, I would, I'd be under a lot of stress if I owned a property there right now, uh, knowing that they can just do this. Because if they can do this, they can propose this, they can propose anything. So Governor Josh vowed Monday not to let out-of-state buyers exploit land in devastated Lahania for development at the expense of the local community. The comments addressed Local fears of speculators will swoop in to build hotels and other buildings in the historic coastal town that was left in Ashen, Westland, by wildfires a week ago. I've actually reached out to the Attorney General to explore options for a moratorium on any sales of properties that have been damaged or destroyed. Crazy. Moreover, I would caution people that it's going to be a very long time before any growth or housing can be built. So you'll be pretty much poorly informed if you try to steal land from other people and then build here. The honey of fire is the deadliest fire in more than 100 years, right? 2,200 structures. They say 1,500 of them are residential. Well, it says 2,200 structures in total. So obviously that's probably in including a lot of businesses as well. Uh, it, it's very crazy. This It's absolutely insane. I honestly can't believe it because when you look at these types of things happening, I mean, I've talked about this on this channel before, saying that the real estate market as a whole, everything that we know about real estate investing is changing very, very slowly. And this is a really good indication of just this. Now, I said back then when the eviction moratoriums and all these things came out, that this is not, you know, this is not something that is just going to come once. And this is not something that smart and savvy real estate investors are thinking, you know, they're dismissing any future risk to this because if they can do it once, they can do it a second time and a third time and a fourth time and things can just get harder and harder and more uh, strict and draconian going forward. And when you see you know, those eviction moratoriums and you start to see this conversation unfold, you have to realize that there's probably gonna be more of these situations going forward. And so savvy investors are really, really underwriting risks differently. They're looking at all these different trends. They're looking at property insurance. They're looking at rising costs that they could be hit with. They're looking at any type of curveball that could potentially come and they're underwriting it in their deal in advance. Because the last thing you wanna do is, uh, is bank on everything being okay and everything being completely fine and everything going back to 2017. This is a very clear indicator that we're not going back to 2017. We're not going back to 2018, 2019. We're going to a completely different real estate market, a completely different type of economy, uh, an economy in which people are gonna make a hell of a lot of money. There's no doubt about it. There's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna make a lot of money. There's gonna be a lot of people that simply think that this stuff could never happen and this stuff never will happen and that you know they don't need to underwrite risk differently. They don't need to really be cautious going forward. Those people, I think, are gonna learn some really hard lessons. But uh, a lot of smart and savvy investors are gonna do well. But something like this, this is concerning where they can basically just take taxpayer revenue and then force taxpayers out from being able to buy these properties and then using their own money to acquire their own. Like this, this is absolutely nuts. What do you think about this entire situation? Do you think that this is actually gonna happen? Do you think we're gonna see this scenario unfold where all of this property, all of this land 
is going to start getting acquired from the state, right? And then p potentially being switched over uh, as like conservation land to where it's no one's allowed to be on it. It's just, you know, for, for the nature, for the environment. That's what I'm betting is going to happen. I would bet, I'd bet everything on that. I'd bet that that is how this whole thing is going to play out. We're going to start to see more and more and more of these scenarios unfold in the near future. If this first one goes, we're going to see more of them. Promise you. Drop below, hit the like button, Abby on IG. Uh, let me know your thoughts about this. Let me know your thoughts on this entire scenario. And if you want to fix your credit, you want to position yourself with the greatest wealth transfer of all time, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. If you have bad credit and you think you're going to be able to invest, you think you're going to be able to get ahead in the next six months, 12 months, 24 months, it's going to be an uphill battle because banks are tightening up lending. The world's getting harder. Uh, they're going to be looking at risk differently. And if you were a bank and you're looking at your own credit score, you're looking at you, yourself as a borrower, and you're saying, I wouldn't lend that guy money, you want to change that. You want to change that. You want to position yourself to where you would lend you money in that scenario. If the answer is no, then I would fix it because the world's going to get crazier. This is a really good testament as to just how crazy things are starting to get. You want to prepare yourself for it. Drop your comments below. Uh, greatcreditfast.com. Catch you guys next video.